Hey guys, so we're going to do equations of circles and we're talking about graphing circles on a coordinate plane. So think of it as being graphed on an XY axis, right? A coordinate plane. So we have two different forms of circles. The one that makes us happy is the easiest one to graph from, which is what we call the standard form of a circle. And then there's also something that we call the general form of a circle. And you'll notice the general form, it looks really complicated, but it is just the standard form multiplied out and then set equal to zero. And we'll do a couple examples of that in just a minute. So with the standard form of a circle, you'll notice that it might look kind of familiar to equations when you learned about shifting parabolas or equations of lines. And so we have the x coordinate here, and it's written as x minus h quantity squared, where h we take the opposite sign that's in the parentheses, right? And h is the x coordinate of the center. And then we have y minus k quantity squared, and k is the y coordinate of the center. And then the radius, it's set equal to the radius squared. So to get the value of the radius, we just take the square root of that number. And so um, just some pretty basic things to get us started here. So for our number one, write an equation of a circle with the center at three negative two and a radius of four. So every time I do these problems, I suggest that we write down what the values are. So we have the center is at three negative two and the radius equals four. So I could put this equation in either one of these forms because it didn't specify on this question. So I'm gonna go with the easy one, right? Standard form of a circle. So when I write this out, I'm gonna write X minus, and then it's gonna be the X coordinate here. So X minus three quantity squared. It's always plus in between for a circle. And then Y minus negative two, so that's gonna become a plus quantity squared equals the radius squared. And then I do have to simplify that in that I have to square that radius, so I don't wanna leave it written as four squared. So I'm gonna write it like this. Okay, and that's it. That's the equation of my circle with a center at positive three, negative two, and a radius of four. So the next one, let's go on to the second one, and we'll write an equation of a circle with a center at the origin and a diameter of 10. So again, I wanna write down the center, so the origin, that's just zero, zero. And then a radius is what I need but I have a diameter, so I'm gonna say the radius is equal to the diameter divided by two. So 10 divided by two equals five, all right? And so when I have a, a circle at the origin, I would end up doing x minus zero. Well, I don't have to show that, so I'm just gonna do x squared plus and then y minus zero. So if it's a zero, I don't, I don't write that. So I get x plus y squared equals the radius squared. Okay. And then the last one, write an equation of a circle with the center at two negative nine and a radius of two root 11. Okay, so the reason we gave you this one is because sometimes we struggle writing two root 11 and squaring that. So let's practice a little bit. So I'm gonna have my center is gonna be x minus two squared plus, and again, I have a negative number here, so that's gonna be a y minus minus nine, so it becomes a positive nine. 
and then I'm going to get 2 root 11 squared. So remember, if you do that in your calculator, you have to put it in parentheses in order to square it. But hopefully we don't have to do that in our calculator. And we'll do... And remember, um, 2 root 11 squared is equal to 2 squared times the square root of 11 squared. This becomes 4 times square root of 11 times square root of 11 is just 11. So 4 times 11 equals 44. All right, so this would be equal to 44. Okay, not too bad, right? And so the next question is just giving us the circle in standard form. And it just wants us to list the center and calculate the radius. Well, the center is easy. I just have to remember to change the sign. So since I have x minus 6 here, the x coordinate is going to be 6 y plus 3, so the y coordinate will be negative 3, and then the radius is equal to the square root of this number, right? And normally we would say plus or minus, but I can only have a positive length of the radius, so I would only have a positive 5 here. All right, and then the last one here, number five, when we have to write the general form from standard form. So remember, this is standard form. And some people get these confused because it seems like standard form should be all multiplied out and this should be general, but it's kind of backwards in my mind what it should be. But regardless, the general form, we need it to look like this. And these letters here, those are just coordinates, like numbers. There'll be numbers that, that go in front of the X and Y terms. And then E represents a number um, by itself without, without the terms. So if we want to convert from general form to standard form, I mean, from standard form to general form, we need to multiply this out. So when you're doing this, I strongly suggest that you write everything out. So I'm going to write this out. And when, remember, when I'm squaring a binomial, what I need to do is FOIL that. So, and then I'm going to have this one over here. Equals 36. So the biggest thing is not to get lost and forget what we're doing. So if you just do it kind of slowly and spell it all out, we're going to get x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16. And then I'm going to remember my plus here and then do the same thing for my y term. So I'm going to get y squared plus 3y plus 3y plus 9 equals 36. And then what I want to do, if I come back up here and I look at my form, the general form of the circle, notice that it has to be my x squared, then my y squared, then the x, then the y, then the number by itself. So the order matters here. So we don't want to forget that. So I, I'm going to consolidate my numbers here. So I have my 16, my 9, my 36. I made sure I get everything. And so I need to combine these numbers. And remember, in my equation up here, I need to set everything equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract the 36 over to this side. So I'm going to get 25 from these minus 36 gives me negative 11. So when I write it all out, minus 11 equals zero.
Okay, so at the end, I always want to go back and make sure I have it in the right order, make sure I copied down all my signs correctly when I multiplied, and then make sure I set my equation equal to zero right here. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So the biggest thing is remember when you when you square this x minus 4 quantity squared, you have to write it down again because it's a binomial times a binomial, so that requires that I FOIL that out together. So on your notes here, you have the first four problems. You're just supposed to write these equations of these circles in standard form given the center and the radius. So pause the video and give yourself a few minutes to try questions one through four, and we'll keep going when you're ready. Okay, so check your work. How'd you do? On this one, remember the things you wanna check that are the most common mistakes, we wanna make sure and change the sign here. So I have a positive five, it has to be X minus five in the parentheses. Quantity squared, don't forget the little twos. Always a plus in between. And then quantity y minus 15 squared equals the radius squared, three squared. So make sure you write nine, not three squared. So check your work on three, one, two, three, and four. And feel free to pause the video. And then the next thing we need to talk about is Given the graph of a circle, how do we write the equation? Well, when you're writing the equation from a graph, again, what we wanna do is we need to find the center and we need to find the radius, okay? So to find the center on this one, it's pretty straightforward, but I just can draw a diameter and find the midpoint of the diameter. So if I count the boxes, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 would be the length of the diameter. So the radius has to be 6, has to be halfway, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, if I'm counting. So that gives me the length of the radius. It also tells me the center of the circle. And just to make sure I can do the diameter vertically as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the center is exactly at zero, zero, which makes it kind of easy to write the equation. So remember when I, when I have a zero in the center, I don't have to put it in the parentheses in the equation. So I would just say x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. So 6 squared is 36. There we go. Okay, this one's a little harder and the graph looks kind of funny here, but this is the origin down here. All right. So this is if I count across, you want to find the widest part of the circle. And I can do it from top to bottom as well. So I'm just counting. So the diameter is four. So the radius is two. So I'm gonna, again, I'm going to write down the center and the radius. And then the center, where those intersect, I usually do a vertical line and a horizontal line. Where those intersect, that's going to be the center. So looking at my graph, that looks like negative 1 up 4. So the center is negative 1, 4. And then I'm going to write the equation of my graph. So x minus minus 1 plus y minus 4 equals 2 squared, which is 4. Okay, so we have four more problems here, 7 through 10. So pause the video and see if you can correctly state the center and the radius.
Okay, so how did you do? So make sure you're paying attention to the signs here and make sure when you take the square root of r, don't, it's not, it's nine, not 81. If something doesn't simplify nicely as a square root, we just write it as the square root of six, like we do in nine, in number nine. And then on problems like number 10, you want to be sure and simplify your radical if needed. So we would get the square root of 20, which simplifies to 20 is equal to four times five. So the square root of four is two. So I get two root five for the radius. Okay, so next on problems 11 and 12, we're going to write the equation in general form, given the equation in standard form. So if you go back and look at your notes, we know that general form has to look like this, right? So when I write my equation in general form, I need to have my x squared, then y squared, then x, then y, plus the number, plus or minus, equals zero. So pause the video and see if you can do it right. So how did you do? So I put my answers in a box. So check your answers here. And check your answers here. And if you made a mistake, pause and stop the video and go back and look at all my steps and see if maybe you missed a sign somewhere or forgot to distribute or made a small error somewhere. And if we're good to go, we'll keep going. So next thing we're gonna do is graph some circles. So on these, um, I'm horrible at drawing circles, as you guys know. So, um, but what we really care about is we wanna mark the center of the circle and then graph as many integer points as possible. So, um, by that we just mean you know on on an intersection where where the boxes are right so for number 13 let's just go through the steps here so on number 13 the first thing i want to do is i'm going to list the center which is positive one negative one and the radius which is four so when i graph this i want to find the center first one negative one so here's the origin so one negative one, that would be the center. And then the radius is four. So from the center on your graphs, what I would look for is I want you to count right, up, left, and down the distance of the radius. So from the center, you wanna clearly mark the center and then count to the right four, one, two, three, four. And then up four, one, two, three, four left four, one, two, three, four, and down four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's gonna get, look kind of like a domino almost, and then you can do your best to connect the dots. And like I said, it's gonna be a smushy square is pretty much how it looks for me. But um, you need to have five points. If you wanna show more than that, that's great. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to start by listing the center and the radius. So the square root of 1 equals 1. I don't know why, but we always have issues with people freaking out about that. So radius is 1. So again, I'm going to find my center. So negative 2, negative 3. So negative 2, negative 3. 1, 2, 3. That's the center radius of one, so it's gonna be teeny tiny. There we go. Okay, and then on number 15 here, again, I'm gonna list my center. So the center here is two. What do I do when there's nothing in parentheses? Oh, it must be zero. And then the radius is the square root of 25, so 5. 
So my center is two, zero, and I'm gonna count five points to the right, up, left, and down. So one, two, three, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then do my best to make it A circle, squishy, looks like a rugby ball. All right, and then last one over here. The center is negative two, negative three. The radius is the square root of 10. Okay, now these are harder because what the heck is the square root of 10? I don't know, but you know what? I know that the square root of 10 has to be between the square root of nine and the square root of, what's the next one up? Let's see, not 11, not 12, not 13, not 14, not 15, oh, 16. So the square root of 10 has to be somewhere between three and four. So if we just show it on our graph as like halfway between three and four, that is totally fine. Okay, so we can just estimate it. So my center is gonna be negative two, negative three, right there, and then I'm gonna count a little more than three to the right. So one, two, three, we'll put it like halfway. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three and a half, one, two, three and a half. So I'm gonna go like this. All right, that's not too tough, is it? All right, and then the last types of problems we'll do are 17 and 18. So determine if the point is on the circle. When we say on the circle, we mean like on the edge of the circle, on the circumference of the circle. So what do we do? Well, we can plug this in, and if the equation works, then yes, it's on the circle. If it doesn't work, then no, it's not on the circle. So I'm gonna plug in eight for X and 10 for Y. So it looks like it's gonna be a complicated equation, but what I wanna do is simplify these, right? So eight minus four, I get four, plus 10 minus 10, that's just zero equals 16. So is this true? I'm saying, is it? Well, that's 16 plus zero equals 16. So whoop, yes, it is. So we say yes. So on a test, you can't just say yes. You have to say yes and show your work to justify it. Okay, so if I were a betting person, I would bet this one would be no, but let's check it out. All right, so given the point 12, negative 9, does it work in this equation? So let's plug it in. So I'm going to say 12 minus 15 plus negative 9 plus 10. And does that equal 4? 12 minus 15. All right, so that's negative 3. And remember, I'm going to keep it in parentheses. Not that we need to do that in a calculator, but just in case. And that's a positive 1 equals 4. So negative 3 squared is the same as three squared, which is nine, plus one squared is one equals four. Does that equal four? No, it doesn't. So is the point on the circle? No, it's not. And I could look at this and say, this point, because 10 is bigger than four, this point would be outside the circle. It didn't ask me that question, but we could figure that out. Or we could graph it and look at it that way. So that's really all there is to it. So just takes a little practice. It's not too complicated. Um, and so just watch your steps and go slowly enough that, that we don't make mistakes.